Hey everyone, I'm so glad. It's been a little while since I've been on here. Summer kind of got away from me, which I think is totally fine. I think it's good for you guys too to see that being consistent can be useful, but also it's important to take time for yourself. And also that that thing that I like to touch on a lot about consistency is also starting again. It's okay to take a break and just start again. Um, I want you to see that that's possible. It's doable and it doesn't mean anything has gone wrong. We just start again. So anyways, today I wanted to talk about decision making. So this is something that a lot of people struggle with. And I believe that the main reason people struggle is because of fear, fear of what the decision's going to, what the outcome's going to be, right? So a lot of the times we just are so afraid to make the wrong decision. So I want to talk about that today how to kind of overcome some of those things, and then how to make a decision and move forward. So um, there's a couple things also that I want to touch on. I want to touch a little bit on decision fatigue as well, and we'll cover that a little bit later. Um, so first off, fear of making the wrong decisions stems from fear of self-judgment. And also um, like there's like an internal dialogue that goes along with that. Right. So we think that it might be like fear of the outcome, fear of what people are going to think of us. But I want you to know that even the fear of thinking like, if I make this decision and it turns out poorly, right, what are these people going to think of me? It's actually not about what those people are going to think of you. It's about what you are going to think of you, because we actually don't know what those people are going to think about us if we make the decision and it turns out less than desirable. We have no clue, right? Unless somebody tells us specifically, like, I can't believe you made that decision. That was so stupid. We're not going to know that thing. So I want you to just like realize that it's okay to um, have those fears. There's nothing wrong with it, but that's where it's coming from. Okay. So what do I like to do is before I even make the decision, I decide ahead of time how I'm going to talk to myself if it is an undesirable result. So if I have to make a decision in my business, in my personal life, in whatever, and my fear is, I don't know, what if I choose the wrong product? What if I choose the wrong price? What if, you know, and we're trying, and we're just like, don't make the decision, right? I decide right now, before the decision's even made, that whatever happens I'm going to talk nicely to myself. So if it is, um, let's talk business for just a minute. If it's a business decision and I if I order a product, I spend money and I quote unquote waste money. If the product doesn't sell, it's a flop. My customers don't like it, right? And it doesn't work out for whatever reason. How am I going to talk to myself? First off, I'm going to say, of course, Ashley, you couldn't have known. There's no way. And I like to talk to myself in the third person. It removes us from that internal dialogue and kind of like separates us out and it can be super helpful. So of course, Ashley, you, you couldn't know how this was going. You made your best guess and you took action. I'm so proud of you for taking action, right? I'm so proud of you. And then the second part of that is what did I learn from this experience? right? So did I learn something about my customers? Did I learn something about ordering products? Did I learn something about pricing? Did I learn something about how much effort it's going to take? Did I learn something about myself, right? Everything that we do, whether it's a success or quote unquote failure, what did we learn from that thing? And then that that whole experience can never actually be a failure because we learn something from it, okay? Learning costs resources. I used to say learning costs money, and I think that's still true, but we learn something. We Whenever we learn something, it's going to cost our time, our energy, or our money, resources. Something's going to happen. So what did I learn from this? And so that whole experience, I can always know that at the end, I'm going to treat myself kindly and I'm going to learn something. So that whole decision-making process, that fear, I can take that out of it and say, this is going to be a good experience no matter what. And then I don't have to be afraid, right? So we're not making a decision from fear of what we're going to think about ourselves and what other th people are going to think about ourselves. Because here's the thing, people might still say those terrible, awful things about you. They may say, that was such a dumb decision. But I want you to know 
it doesn't really matter if you don't care what they say, if you're talking nicely to yourself. So if you're saying, hey, that was, I'm really proud of you for taking action, for making that decision, for moving forward, right? Then we can kind of blow off what other people are saying. We're like, well, I'm proud of me and that's what's important. And I know that's not always easy. We're going to, we're still going to care about what other people think. That's something that's pretty normal and kind of the human experience, but we can just say that was part of it. I knew that that might happen and I'm going to have some grace and compassion with myself. So always, always go there. Like before, if you're having trouble making decision, yes or no, here or there, whatever, I want you to just sit down and decide the thing I'm most afraid of is of what I'm going to think of myself and then write down what you're going to teach or tell yourself when the decision is made, if it doesn't go right. Now you can also look, this decision may go well, right? So we, I like to prepare for both ways, both ways. It may turn out phenomenal. You may make this decision and it may be the best decision you ever made, right? And then you can also say like, look, making decisions is such a great thing. You did so well. Look at how you're learning all those kinds of things. So just realizing you get to decide how you talk to yourself and nobody else does. This doesn't mean if the decision goes well that you're automatically going to think good thoughts. Like you may think, oh, I'm so dumb. I can't believe I did that. But knowing that that first thought is just your program thinking, it's the next thought that we choose on purpose that really determines who we are, right? And so we just are like loving and kind of ourselves. Of course, I know where this, these negative thoughts about myself are coming from, but I've decided to talk kindly and nicely to myself and look at all these things I've learned and how I've grown through this process, right? So just realizing, talk kindly to yourself, decide now that that's how it, what's going to happen. Okay, so the other part of that is I talked a little bit about decision fatigue. So a lot of decision fatigue is just like we're making decisions constantly. And so it becomes tiring. We get so tired of making decisions. This is normal, right? Because decisions like, but the reason that we're so tired is because we're afraid of making the decisions. If we can just make decisions and we don't have to be afraid of the outcomes and not saying that every good de every decision is going to be a good decision, but if we don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen, then it doesn't become so tiring. We don't have the fatigue, right? So some of these decisions may cause have a lot of risk involved with them. And I think that's where a lot of fear can come in too. Um, but I want you to realize that that risk, I want you to mitigate it, right? So always, always do your due diligence when you're making a decision, right? So if you are doing something for business, I want you to obviously go and do a little market research. Um, if you are, if it has a big risk associated with it, we talked about how things cost resources, right? What are the resources this is going to cost you? And so determining that up front, determining what could be lost, and then never going in over your head. We're into a place where this could like make or break you. Um, I think that that's kind of, you know, there, there's always some risk involved, but if it's going to cost my house, then I don't know if that's worth it to me. And everybody's different. You may feel differently about those kinds of things, but if you know that this risk is that you can still navigate if this falls through, because not, like I said, not every decision we make is going to be a good decision. But then there's the other part of that is the more decisions we make, the better we become at decision making. So, right, a lot of us put off decision making because it's scary and big and we're afraid of the out outcomes. But the more decisions that we make, we learn from those things and then we make better decisions. We're able to start seeing like, oh, see how, why that wasn't a good decision. You see how we learn from those things. So start with smaller decisions and then start building up, right? So that's why I'm saying like, don't bet the house on it if you're not ready for that, right? Start with something a lot smaller. So if you're buying inventory for a business, start with something a lot smaller and then move your way up. Start making bigger decisions. Um, you can always also help with decision fatigue. I know there's things like Steve Jobs would wear the same clothes and Mark Zuckerberg, they wear the same clothes every day. So they never had to make that decision. It was one less decision. You can also automate your life in ways like that to make it a lot easier for you. For me, I don't want to do the same clothes every day, but that's just my personal style. So, but I don't change them a lot, but just realizing like you can automate things like that as well. Uh, maybe it's 
meals or it's, you know, how you run your household chores and those kinds of things. There's always ways that you can automate. They can cause less decision fatigue so that you can move forward. Okay, so I just, the other thing that I like to do, and I talked a little bit about this earlier, is I want you to like how I talked about third person. I want you to think about like new perspectives when you're making decisions. So just imagine somebody else making the decision. So this can be really helpful. Um, it like if you were working for someone else or if some you had a boss who was telling you what to do and you had to make the decision for the boss, like that can be really helpful. So we can start like getting a new perspective on this kinds of things, right? Or you can always simply flip a coin. I always tell this to people. If it's like a decision that doesn't matter, like heads or tails, yes or no, and the other thing with flipping a coin, and I really mean flipping a coin, get out that quarter and flip it, right? Because sometimes if it's like heads is yes, tails is no, and we flip it and we get tails and it's no, and we feel really defeated about that, then we know that we wanted to choose yes. Always a simple way. Another way that I like to say this is if you're not all in on something, then it's a no. Like, so if somebody comes up and they're like, do you want to help with your child sports team's dinner or something like that? And you're like, I don't, I don't know if I have the time. I don't know if I have the money. I don't know if I have the energy, blah, blah. It's a no. It's just simply a no. If that's something that's not required of you to be there or for your child to be there, then you can always say no, right? If it's not a hell yes, then it's a hell no. And that's an easy way to distinguish. So simply just deciding that can be so helpful as well. And I also want you to know that like embrace the fact that there's rarely a single right decision. There's not. There's a million decisions in one decision. A lot of the times we think it's black or white, yes or no. But a lot of times it's a gray scale. It's a sliding scale. There's a lot of things in there that can go different ways, right? So once we learn that there's not a right decision because this isn't school and we don't have to choose the right answer on our multiple choice test, then we can see that like, hey, let's start thinking out of the box. What are some other ways we could do this? What are some like, instead of like, do I have to make this big order? Maybe I can make it smaller. And then how does this decision, like maybe in your personal life, it's different. Like instead of, like I said, helping with, um, a dinner or something for your kids' sports teams, maybe it's like, I can provide this, the paper plates and stuff, right? I don't have to cook anything, right? There's so many ways that we can look at, like, there's not a right decision. Like, there's all kinds of, there's a sliding scale, and it's not black and white, the way that we were taught most of the time in the regular school system that we have. So realizing there's a lot of different choices, and one doesn't lead to automatic success and one leads to failure. It's there's so many in between areas and just knowing that we can move forward because whatever we choose, we're going to learn something from. It's not necessarily right or wrong. So my challenge for you, if you've been putting off a decision, I want you to set a day and a time when that decision will be made. Because there's something a lot of times people say, oh, it took me so long to make this decision. No, actually, it didn't. You made the decision in a moment. What took you so long was your waffling back and forth and going over the things and doing all that. But if you set a day and time, you're like, I'm going to have this decision made by Friday at 8 p.m. Friday at 8 p.m. comes around and you're going to have your back no matter what. That's what I mean by talking nice to yourself at the end, even if it fails, is having your own back. So you decide, okay, this is my decision. I feel good about this. I'm going to move forward. And then decide. The word decide actually means to cut off. So it means that we are no longer going to make room for any of those other decisions. We, we've cut off that and now we're moving forward. This is what creates action. This is what creates momentum. And this is how we go forward. So if you do have a decision Set that day, set that time, and just decide. Cut it off and move forward and know that it's going to work out whatever way that is, even if failure is included. And failure meaning it could just be less than perfect, <laughs> right? So just realizing you can do these things. So I know that you can do this. I know that decisions can seem scary, but a lot of this is just learning not to fear ourselves. 
You've got to get into this. Another thing that I'm going to give you one other way is I want you to start, like, you can always work backward from decisions. Like, imagine yourself making that decision. And then how did it turn out? This is all in your imagination. How did it turn out? And what were the problems you faced? And you can work backward from that way, too. It's kind of fun. Um, Hopefully, this helps. Hopefully, this helps you to, like, make decisions so you can move forward. Because decisions will keep us stuck round and round and round. And we have to decide, cut it off, and move forward. Um, like I said, hopefully, this helps. Um, if you like this kind of coaching, um, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. A lot of it is me teaching, but most of it is learning what works for you. And we start to get in your head and start to fill, get those things. And you come up with the answers, not me. This is about learning what, what's best for you because you are the authority on you. So like I said, I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go ahead. There should, there'll be a link in the show notes and in the comments or wherever you're viewing this. And you can always go to my website, ashleycameron.coach, and you can sign up for free one-on-one -on -one consultation with me to see if coaching is the right fit for you. And there's no obligation. And I want you to know you're not wasting my time. Like you can come get the, um, get the help that you need and see if that's right. And even if it like, you're like, decide in the end, it's not right for you. Totally fine with me. I won't pressure you into anything because I don't like being pressured into stuff. So anyways, hopefully you have a good day. Go out and make lots of decisions. Be nice to yourself all along the way and have your own back. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Thank you.